welcome back, and we're going to talk about how to find the sums of infinite series today. All right. So this lesson is about to find the sum of infinite series. Now, in order to find the sum of an infinite series, you have to th think about um, what type of series can you find the sum of. And we're going to use some sum formulas to help us figure this out. And we're going to stick with the two basic ones. We have an arithmetic sum formula. We have n going to over 2. We have first term plus our last term. And then we have a geometric. Now, when we talk about finding the sums of the infinite series, we're going to be looking at it. We have the first term. Just going to write this out real quick. And over one nice r. Now, when we're talking about this, and in order to find the sum of infinite series, that means we're taking a limit. And the limit means that we are going to be plugging it in values or trying to figure out what happens when our n value goes to infinity. All right, now when you look at this, what we have is we're plugging in infinity in for n. And when you do that, just look at an arithmetic, first off, is that we're going to have infinity divided by 2. Now, you might be thinking that you can divide infinity by 2, but you really can't. Because there is no value that you can plug in and divide that by 2. Because infin infinity is just this arbitrary large value that um, has no specific values. There's a bunch of different infinities. So if we had infinity divided by 2, which we can't do, we also have a first term. And let's just say I just created an arithmetic sequence, something easy. All right, and we're going to infinity here. And I plug in my first term, so I get it as 1. And then I plug in infinity into this, all right, arithmetic sequence. And what we find out is that we actually get a very large value, which actually goes to infinity again. So not only are we going to be taking infinity divided by 2, but we're also going to be taking 1 plus infinity, which is impossible. So what we say is that this series diverges. It diverges, meaning it goes on forever. It approaches infinity or negative infinity. It does not have a value. So all arithmetic sequences do not converge or go anywhere when they go to infinity. So we're not going to use arithmetic. Now, geometric, on the other hand, has some different properties. When we look at geometric, there are different types of geometric sequences. And geometric is associated with exponential okay, graphs. And if you think about an exponential graph, exponential graphs, um, as they go to infinity, if it's a positive value, it can go up like that, and it keeps on diverging. But also, when you go to infinity, if you have a decreasing exponential, it has a horizontal axis close to zero. So depending on the different equation we have, so let's just say we have going to infinity, something simple again, I'll just put one half to the n power. Okay. When we do this, well, we're going to take the same thing, the limit as, all right, n goes to infinity. And when that happens, when we go here, and I write my sum formula, I have this first value. All right, which is going to be plug in one in there, to one half. I have one minus my ratio. My ratio in this case is one half, going to n, and I have one minus one half. Well, here because my ratio is less than one, okay, so my ratio is less than one, greater than zero. All right, I have a decreasing exponential. All right, decreasing exponential. All right, exponential sequence. Well. When you take this to infinity, then, let's think, think about this. Um, one half stays the same as it goes to infinity. We have one minus, well, now we have one half going to infinity, raised through the infinite power. Well, one half, and you raise to a little power, it becomes a smaller and smaller value. And actually, as you can see in our little graph, actually because it decreases, it approaches this horizontal asymptote, has an m behavior of zero. So it's going to be divided by, or minus zero. So this right here is going to turn to zero as n goes to infinity, because it becomes a smaller and smaller number. Then we take 1 minus 1 half, nothing changes there, and so we have a value, which is kind of cool, because what we got is 1 half then, times 1 over, well, it's going to be 1 half, and you can see 1 half times 1 half, which is actually going to equal 1. This value is going to be approaching 1, which is kind of neat. So right here, the sum of this infinite series, all right, is actually going to be going to 1. So there are 
series that actually do converge. Converging means it goes approaches the value, all right, to a value. And the key thing is, is that right here, it works for geometric with ratios less than one. Okay, so that's our first value. All right, so you do have converging series. It happened with geometric, so it has to be geometric. And the ratio has to be less than one greater than zero. All right, so these are the two criteria for con converging uh, infinite series. And I'll put infinite in here, infinite series. It has to be a geometric, and the ratio has to be less than one greater than zero. Now, you might be thinking, well, could it happen if it, the ratio was greater than zero? All right, or greater than one? Well, I'll just do this on the side real quick. Let's just say we just switched this up, and we had infinite series n equals one. Then we plug in our values, we get two. Two is our ratio, we have one minus two. And we have this, well, the limit as n goes to infinity, as we start plugging in values here, we get two, we get one minus, well, two to the infinite power becomes a very large number, infinity, over one minus two. Well, one minus infinity is not a number, so right here, this diverges. Okay, so really, as with the arithmetic, the only ones that converge, all right, right here, are where you have a geometric, and the ratio is less than one greater than zero. Those infinite series converge. You can find those values. The equation that a lot of times will be used, because the fraction or the ratio always approaches zero right here, in every case, what they sometimes will write, all right, is this. The sum equals the first term, or the initial term, over one minus the ratio. One minus the ratio. Okay. That's the equation that can be used to find the, the value for converging infinite series. All right. So, um, hopefully that kind of explains how you have a converging series. And in the next lessons, we're going to go through and try to find out um, and do some examples on finding these.